Hi, this is your host Abdul Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us once again, Rob Hirschfeld, CEO and co-founder at Rack and Rob, it's great to have you on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, today's uh, discussion is going to be around I mean, unexpected surprise, big announcement. Broadcom is going to acquire a VMware that will complete in 2023. Uh, there are a lot of things to talk about uh, because VMware, they evolved into a very, you know, good open source citizens. They contribute to a lot of open source play, uh, projects. They also play a very critical role in two of the major open source projects. You know, of course, Kubernetes is there. Uh, Cloud Foundry is also there, uh, though a lot of changes are happening at Cloud Foundry itself. Uh, but VMware, if you look at it, they have different businesses, you know, VMware, they kind of championed the whole idea of virtualization, you know, and their, you know, virtualization on desktop is, is still, you know, I still use Fusion and all those technologies and, you know, so uh, they cater to so many different industries, so many different players. So to fully understand the impact is going to be a big challenge. So let's like, you know, break it down as small, small chunks. Uh, but let's be, let's start with, uh, the very basic question number one is: Since you have been in this ecosystem for so long, did were you like was it a surprise to you, or you're like, hey, it was expected, it was a matter of time, or you were like, hey, I did not know anything about that. You know, I, I didn't have any inside information that it was coming. I, I'm not particularly surprised about the acquisition. In, in some ways, right? VMware has been captive into Dell, which was a hardware company for years now, and then it's been transitioned over, you know, supposed to be free and allowed to innovate as a software only company again. But, you know, in some cases, if you think about VMware having been in that sort of free floating role for the, the software for, or under a hardware company for so long, it does make sense for them to continue to be in that role. But my understanding of this deal is that it is, this is Broadcom's action to acquire VMware. It wasn't VMware looking for a suitor or looking for a place to be. Um, and so I, th I think if we take that with a grain of salt, there's two ways to look at this conversation. One is what does Broadcom want to do and how does VMware fit into those strategies? I think the way a lot of the hot takes are coming out in the market, because I don't think people um, in the VMware circles know that much about Broadcom, it's, it really is a, a hardware and a chip manufacturer, is that they're seeing this very much from the VMware perspective or a VMware choice perspective, which I don't think is, is, is the best framing, but it's a very useful framing to think about, does, did VMware need rescue? Um, and I think both are uh, important ways to frame a discussion here. There were a lot of concerns that I was like, really on. So I would love to, first of all, from your, you know, you've talked to a lot of folks, the hot takes, you know, what they are thinking. So what kind of message you are seeing that is coming in, in terms of this acquisition? It's over. It's overwhelmingly negative in as a as an industry perspective on VMware, um, from multiple angles. It's it's considered um, to either be. Broadcom is going to shut down VMware and turn it into a cash cow, um, or that the um, market for VMware products has been declining and, and not, not where it is, or VMware hasn't been innovative enough. And there, there's a lot of sort of thoughts around this model that say that uh, VMware's place in the market is waning. And, and I think that that is, you know, at the end of all these hot takes, it's this core idea that VMware and core enterprise software virtualization is on the decline um, within the cloud sphere and the way people think about clouds. Um, and I, I personally, I, I agree that the way we've thought about virtualization 10 years ago and enterprise software and how enterprises ran infrastructure um, definitely has, has not survived the transition to cloud. Uh, I, I, I think it's, overstating the point to assume that VMware couldn't be a player in the next evolution of what these pieces are, edge, more distributed infrastructure, more developer experience. But it's it's pretty clear to me that um, definitely the industry sentiment that, that VMware's core DNA was not structured in a way to, to make that transition without some major shakeup. Um, I don't think anybody anticipated this would be the shakeup because Fundamentally, Broadcom isn't in that 
isn't in that space. And so they don't have the leadership or the vision or the really the DNA to, to innovate in those spaces. They're going to have to build it um, much the same way VMware would have had to build it. Uh, if you just look at uh, Broadcom uh, and just let's quickly talk about some of the concerns that are there. Uh, I don't know much about the customers that uh, concern that customers should have because you know companies whenever they acquire customer is the priority. That's why they acquire you know companies uh, to bring the customer base. And you also said you know to continue to serve that. Uh, I want to talk about something which is a concern there was is uh, uh, VMware's engagement with Kubernetes with open source communities. Uh, Cloud Foundry is also there. The fact is that Broadcom itself, you know, they also contribute to a lot of open source technologies. Folks may not even know, but you know, they also like mainframe project. There's open mainframe project, which is open source implementation of you know not implementation, but to attract modern developers to modernize mainframe interface because mainframe still plays a very critical role. I mean, people said mainframe is dead, but every time you book a ticket, every and any monetary transaction, it goes through a mainframe, no matter what. So they are still like kind of you can say the backbone of modern economy. It's very easy to write them off, but they are not. Uh, so, so they are uh, engaged with that. They even have, you know, some dashboards or things for Kubernetes monitoring as well. So the, the question here to you is that how much concern you have, how much things will change for VMware's involvement with Kubernetes community? Because, you know, they evolve as major contributors there as well. Yeah, and I, I think that they're going to have to have a story because, you know, it the Kubernetes uh, leaders, the people involved in that, are relatively portable or very portable resources. So if they're not in, invested in the vision that VMware or Broadcom has put together, they, they will exit with their feet and, and take what they're doing someplace else. And with open source, that's actually, there's very low friction for that, that type of action. And you know, Broadcom, and this is what remains to be seen. Broadcom is fundamentally a hardware company. This is you know, acquiring VMware is going to make them much more of a software company by revenue. Uh, the challenge becomes: Do the executives see that opportunity? And it's worth it's really really important to note: hardware companies can be tremendously strong open source contributors. Right? Look at Intel. Uh, from that perspective, because fundamentally they know that that giving away that the software for them is only enabling, you know, selling the hardware. So one of the things I would expect Broadcom to be very excited about for VMware is smart NICs and embedded virtualization, and you know you could actually see the hypervisor on a chip, which from Broadcom's perspective makes a ton of sense because now they can sell the chip; it's an asset. They don't have to worry about software licensing and and all the other things that go along with that. And and open source in those models is pretty easy when you are selling a device or selling a service because the software is conveyed through a, a different model. So it could be that Broadcom has a real vision for doing this, and that could um, make VMware's assets or software assets more accessible to people or more easily consumed, right? I, I already see smart NICs and embedded hypervisors as being a very interesting market phenomena, especially in the edge. Um, and you could see doing more work on converged infrastructure and hyper-converged infrastructure. All those things could easily be um, priorities inside of Broadcom that would be very innovative and interesting. Your point about uh, Tanzu and Kubernetes and some of the other open source um, services that, that VMware has, um, my, ex my expectation is those will end up being spun out um, and allowed to stand alone on, their, on, on a company. I don't know if Broadcom needs to see cash back from this deal, and that would be you know, potentially, I don't know who would acquire a Tanzu from that perspective. Um, but I would expect the things that are really developer experience likely are not as, as in uh, Broadcom's wheelhouse, as far as I've seen. They're much, they, you know, of their software assets, the ones I've seen are much more enterprise software rather than the developer experience. Um, but this is the place where VMware and Red Hat also have both been trying to go. They see having developer experience is their secret to success long-term. And this probably makes a pretty hard hard shift for that. Uh, since you put uh, VMware and Red Hat together, that's also very good you know, comparison. You know, with IBM acquired Red Hat. There was similar concerns or worse, worse concern, but you know, uh, Red Hat is kind of driving a lot of 
successful revenues at uh, uh, IBM, uh, they still maintain their you know independent kind of identity within IBM, and it's like uh, the big shiny uh, thing that is there. Uh, what is what is stopping from what is stopping from VMware? Uh, kind of uh, retaining the same identity, same presence within Broadcom as well. It could be part of Broadcom's plans, right? It could be that Broadcom sees VMware as a path to create some software leadership, and and if they embrace the 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 leadership in VMware, the culture in VMware, and pull that in, they could have that similar philosophy where you know IBM is slowly becoming more Red Hat, not the opposite way around. And VMware is big enough that that could be the focus for this. Um, I think one of the things that has everybody sort of scratching their heads is we just don't have a lot of exposure to Broadcom as a, as a brand or as a company as software people. So, um, you know, I, I have to admit my biggest blind spot on this is I just haven't had a lot of interactions with Broadcom at all. I, was, I had to look up what they did <laughs> compared to most acquisitions where I know both parties really well. Um, and so that's that's going to be a fascinating component for how this plays out. Right. But I mean, IBM is also a hardware company. Dell was also a hardware company. So it's, uh, it's uh, but we did know uh, much about, you know, but Broadcom is a totally different uh, kind of player. But, you know, as you also said that it's more about, you know, uh, I mean, why they are bringing uh, VMware in. So we'll see more about it, the things unfold. We'll see that. But uh, yeah, please go ahead. Sorry. Something worth keeping in mind with this is that we, we really don't do a good job in the industry of mixing compute and, and networking together. Um, and VMware, to their credit, has really been doing hard work of doing storage, networking, and, and compute together, right? I, they don't get enough credit for the, the challenge of NSXT, vSAN, and ESX, right? Mixing those together as a comprehensive suite. It's a really, really important mix of technologies. The thing that's interesting with Broadcom is they actually do understand networking. And they understand it really well. And so one of the things that I think is missed in this whole discussion is the extent to which the networking expertise and, and capabilities that Broadcom has might actually show up and start being something critical in people's delivery around the VMware experience and multi-cloud and hybrid and edge, right? We really are not innovating very well in edge, not edge, sorry, in networking technologies, right? I mean, we're all talking about Istio and, and service mesh and things like that. I, we're not really talking about that much innovation or change at the, at the, the core networking pieces. And, and I think that there's actually a lot of opportunity in that space that is overlooked when we think about VMware and this, you know, write it off as a virtualization company. What value Broadcom can bring to the table, not only just for VMware, uh, but to the broader cloud native ecosystem, that, which are still pain points, and just kind of have a rosy person, hey, you know, this is what we might get through this acquisition. Fair enough. Because you know you talked about networking, and you know, so I'm asking you a question that if you there are like you if you do see a pain points, and you say, you know what? But as you rightly said, that we don't know much about Broadcom from that perspective because this is not a company that we talk about often. So our you know kind of insights are limited. But if I ask you, hey, you know what? If I just ask you very positively that you know what? I think these are the pain points that the you know ecosystem is facing, and I think that you know this is where Broadcom can really help. What would that be? I think I think networking is definitely one of them. There, there's an interesting balance here, um, and I think you know I'm, I'm putting on my customers and partners hat for a minute with this because I think without a doubt this you know if I'm a customer of VMware, uh, I can is a partner of VMware. You know you have to scratch your head and say what's going to happen, right? And if I'm a VMware customer looking just to keep using VMware products, I'm probably I should, I should, I'll, I'll probably relax. I don't expect things to change too much. They might increase prices, but I, 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 I doubt that is probably their MO. Um, and most of the people we know are pretty happy with VMware. They're not looking for big leaps of innovation on the core infrastructure at this, at this point. Um, 
So, so I don't think the customers are particularly freaking out unless they were waiting on some particular innovation to come out of, out of VMware. Um, but most of the cases I think of VMware innovation, I feel like they're pulling the customers along. The customers aren't pushing them as much. Um, as a partner, I think that is a big TBD. Uh, I know we look at you know, the potential that Broadcom might decide to partner better, might decide that they don't want to try to keep innovating around VMware, but allow companies like RackN to sort of open up our wings and help. Um, we, you know, frankly, we find it very hard to help VMware at times and help, you know, and, and, and bring, you know, engage with them and in, in customers. And I would love to see Broadcom sort of say, you know what, we're going to stop um, fighting our partners and, and let them innovate around our core products more. Um, so that could happen and it could be a really big opportunity for how things go to market. And I think that the partners that are resellers and really just turning the crank on VMware work is, are probably going to be delighted for Broadcom because my expectation is Broadcom wants to reduce as much friction as it can in those models. And as a, in their other, other businesses, they're pretty good at doing um, partner resale you know, integration stories. Um, and that's always been a challenge, right? With with something a big standalone software company like VMware that has has had a chance to to sort of dominate the landscape for so long, it they're not used to to collaborating as much with with equal partners and, and other people in their ecosystem. So this could be a real opportunity for Broadcom to sort of step back and say, let's let's make sure we're an ecosystem play here. This is all speculation. I, I really don't know. They could stomp in like a like a Godzilla and just start crushing everything around them trying to, to trying to gather it um, and they could also start acquiring um, even more aggressively around the VMware ecosystem and try and consolidate consolidate their positions um, there's a lot this is the challenge on the the, the partner side is there's a lot of knobs for uh, Broadcom to, to move forward with um, but interestingly, in, in all the hot takes I've seen, I haven't seen anybody complaining that Broadcom's a bad partner. Um, I've seen plenty of talk about the way they treat their acquisitions and downsize and cut out innovation and 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 you know really try to try to make the software products more profitable from an EBITDA perspective. But I, I haven't seen any complaints about I don't like partnering with Broadcom or Broadcom's hard to work with. Um, work for perhaps, but not with. Rob, thank you so much for joining me at such a short notice to just quickly you know, jump on a call and discuss the kind of, it's too too early, but it's kind of, I look at it, this as a premature discussion on the topic. We will see more. Uh, as we see more, more you know, uh, details are disclosed and we will talk more about it. But you are so right about uh, that, you know, we are where those the folks uh, from the open source community, so it's it's not going to hurt at all. Those folks can move out and then open source projects, you know, they're either held by some foundations or they're in open. So that is the beauty that we don't have to really worry about things that much as we used to have worry about in the past when acquisitions like these happen. And uh, both, you know, Broadcom in their capacity, they do contribute to a lot of open source projects that I do know of. And of course, VMware does a lot of things either way. So um, it was a great discussions. And I just said, you know, I would love to have you back on the show whenever we have something else to talk about. Thank you. Always waiting for the breaking news. So it's a pleasure.